Workforce Health Council Legislative Committee meeting. It's uh, February 10th, 2023 and 8.30. And we are um, calling this meeting to order. And Courtney, would you mind taking roll call? Yes, I will take roll. Samantha Albert. Present. Great. Christy Belton. Here. Commissioner Hillary Cooper. Pat. I'm here Dorf. on the phone with two, three, two, one. Okay, great. Yeah, let me make note of the numbers. <laughs> Pat Dorsey. Director McCombs. Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally. Present. Mark Morgan. Here. Julie Stencil. Here. And Sylvan White Skunk. Okay, so we do have quorum for today, which is which is great. Great. Thank you all for being here today. Um, so the next item is approval of minutes, and I just wanted to tell everyone. Um, I know Courtney was had a very busy week, and I know she's working really hard between having our Forest Health Council meeting, and then um, I believe you had a special guest um, in Colorado that you needed to kind of um, hang out, uh, support uh, Director Gibbs. So we are going. I know you just got those, so I'm sure you all wanted to have a little more time to review them, um, and so we thought we'd go ahead and um, pause on approving those today, um, unless you all feel differently. Um, I haven't had a chance to uh, re review them, but I will, um, unless there's a strong um, desire to approve them today, I was going to suggest we move them to the next meeting for approval. Okay, well, let's move those on to the next agenda, uh, the next uh, meeting. And thank you all. And Courtney, thank you for your all your work on that. And no worries. Um, I don't think it was as critical for today. And so we'll um, we'll approve those the next meeting. So we'll move on to the next update. This is gonna Matt, this might be a little bit of a short meeting today. So this is great. So we uh, we'll move on to our legislative update. And I have uh, um, myself and. Um, Mr. Morgan and then Daphne's here and I want to honor Daphne's time too because I hear it's going to be a little busy, busy day at the Capitol. Um, last week on February, uh, when was it the Tuesday, right? Um, with the Senate of uh, the forestry bill um, was in committee. And so uh, I think it was in the House committee, if I remember right. And so we, um, because the Forest Health Council had approved, had voted to approve to support that bill, um, Mr. Morgan and I uh, were contacted and we uh, uh, testified in support of that bill. Um, I thought Mr. Morgan did a phenomenal job with a lot of high, um, high level details about the quality of the seedlings and how the soils are different and, um, and it, it moved out of committee. So it was an interesting discussion. Um, and Mr. I'll let uh, Mr. Morgan also share that, but they, um, there was a lot of questions about the amount of money and, and you know, was there a way to do it differently? But in the end, I think everyone um, understood that it didn't, they need that other uh, money to go along to finish the job and do it well, or do, do the whole job. And so um, it was, uh, it was a it was an interesting discussion. We had to wait for a long time because the bill before us had testimony for over an hour. It was an agricultural bill, and uh, so it was uh, an interesting uh, time. And ours was uh, a lot shorter, but it was. I thought we did a. I thought everyone did a great job. So, Mr. Morgan, did you want to add anything to that, or Jeff? No, I think uh, it, you're getting carried away there. It's starting to sound like a salesman's job, but. I think things went well, and I think we got it out of committee, what, a 14 to 0 vote, which is, I think, where we need to get. And uh, I think we got good support for it, and and uh, I think you did really well on it. And uh, it's, uh, I'd like to feel that we can do as well on the, on the workforce development bill. We'll be going a long ways here towards getting some things done, but appreciate everybody's time and help on this and support. And I think it'll be critical for the State Forest Service <clears throat> going forward. And 
somehow I'm not a technological wizard, but I have. If somebody wanted the testimony that I did give, because there was some concern about representing groups and knowing what's going on, I could be happy to arrange that for you if you wanted. So, uh, <clears throat> You did a great job. I thought the test. I I want a copy of it. I thought you had such a great um, piece of testimony. And um, I'm actually at the airport. Everyone getting ready to go to D.C. for the National Association of Counties um, Legislative Conference um, over the weekend. And uh, all the counties. It's a pretty big deal deal for all the counties to come together. I have a eight hour uh, committee meeting on ener environment, energy, and land use. So. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what I learned about other federal things coming down. So, um, and I can always send mine as well. Anyway, um, Daphne, do you want to add on to that? Where are we at with the workforce bill? I know it passed it. It was in going towards appropriate um, appropriations, I thought. Do you want to update all of us on the rest of the legislation of those two bills? And then also the legislation, other legislations we're just kind of keeping an eye on. My curiosity is, I also stayed on um, longer a little bit after the forestry bill to listen to uh, Representative Lynch's bill, and I was curious about that. Definitely. Thanks, Commissioner Shattuck McNally. Good morning, everyone. Um, Daphne here for those of you that are on the phone. Um, you are correct that Senate Bill 5 is now headed to the Senate Appropriations Committee. That could take a while. Um, typically, anything that requires a general fund or any kind of like financial commitment will get held up until the long bill uh, gets introduced and we kind of know what the financial situation is. So it could be a while until we get to that next step. Um, on House Bill 1018, the one that um, Jody also mentioned on the timber industry workforce side of things, as a reminder, that one was very duplicative of, of Senate Bill 5, um, except for a tax credit portion. Everything related to uh, the workforce incentives pretty much mirrored what was in Senate Bill 5. So House Bill 1018 um, also was in a committee hearing this past week, and thankfully all of that duplication got resolved. So that Bill 1018 was amended um, to only have the tax credit portion remaining, stripping out everything um, that was duplicative of Senate Bill 5. So that one passed, I think it was on a 12 to 1 vote, uh, so it looks like it's on a good track. Minority Leader Lynch is the sponsor of that one, and he has also signed on uh, now to Senate Bill 5. Um, so I think that was, you know, everybody's preferred outcome with those two bills um, for my conversation. So glad that it, it ended up in that way. And the tax credit portion in 1018 actually looks like it's on a good track. Um, originally, we weren't sure um, whether that would have some good traction, but it, it looks like it, it's going to pass. So that's what I've got on those two bills. Um, Commissioner, I'll go ahead and jump into some other legislative updates if that works. That's phenomenal. Thank you, um, Daphne. No, I think that was great. And thanks for um, saying a lot more concisely um, about um, minority recruit uh, Lynch's bill. And I'm grateful for him signing up to the Senate Bill 5. That's great. Now, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So on the forestry bill, um, that one did pass unanimously out of the House Agriculture Committee um, this week. An amendment was adopted to provide more time for the State Forest Service to expend the funding that was allocated in last year's bill for the tree nursery. Um, I think originally they were only given one year to expend those funds and it's a pretty significant capital um, project. So uh, they, they would like some more time to use those funds. And so the amendment adopted this week uh, grants that additional time. And it also specifies that um, the funding in this year's bill can also be used to uh, uh, cover the out of year costs that were not uh, captured in last year's bill. So it's just generally speaking, adding uh, enough flexibility in time and in eligible uses for those funds for the State Forest Service to be able to uh, complete that project. So this bill will need an additional appropriation uh, to accomplish the entirety of the project. And just given the budget year that we're in, we know that um, we'll need some pretty strong advocacy to have this prioritized um, for you know, the limited amount of discretionary funding that the legislature has available to them this year. So with this one, again, I anticipate it'll get held up for quite a while 
um, as it's awaiting a, a committee hearing in the House Appropriations Committee. Matt, did you have anything to add to that? Oh, you're off mute, but I can't hear you for some reason. <laughs> All right, well, if you've got anything to add, maybe just pop it in the chat if that works for you. Oh, sorry about that. All right, um, and then just another one. I'm not sure whether this bill is of interest to this group, but I thought I would mention House Bill 1069. Um, this bill would direct for a study on using biochar for plugging oil and gas wells. Um, and DNR is invo involved um, on the oil and gas side of things. The COGCC, the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission within DNR will be providing technical expertise on the study. Um, but then the State Forest Service is also involved in, in, and may actually have a leadership role in the study um, through CSU. Right now, the bill is set up in, in kind of a, uh, it's not a very streamlined approach where it creates this large working group that is going to make recommendations for a pilot program to then study biochar. And the sponsor, um, you know, is, is eager to get the results of this study sooner rather than later to inform legislation. Um, in subsequent legislative sessions. So it sounds like there will be a strike below to the bill to um, just have an institution of higher education, presumably CSU or maybe some others, um, to do this study directly with a smaller advisory group weighing in throughout the process, but not actually leading the charge. Yes, Mr. Timber. <laughs> yes, uh, I was just curious about that. Bill, very much any information you could provide to me on it, because I'm a little bit familiar with the oil and gas side of things, and I've messed around with biochar, and I'm having trouble with the concept of exactly what they're trying to do. So I guess any information up front on what the plan is would be real helpful to me. I appreciate it. Anything you could send us? You bet. I will send Courtney a little bit of uh, information on this bill for her to pass along to you. Um, all right, so on the budget side of things, I just wanted to mention that uh, DNR's supplemental budget requests have been moving through the process. Senate Bill 139 is our supplemental to fund COSWAP, the Colorado Strategic, uh, Strategic Wildfire Action Program. So that bill includes $5 million ongoing. And uh, the JBC also added $5 million as a one-time transfer um, from a severance tax to the same that same program. Um, our request was actually only for $2 million. So uh, this was a welcomed addition to our original request and just kind of, um, you know, demonstrates that uh, wildfire mitigation is a big priority for uh, the Joint Budget Committee and the legislature as a whole, and also demonstrating that um, recognize success of the co-swap program. Along that's that's yeah. great news. That's wonderful, great news. I'm so excited to hear that. Yeah, it is wonderful. And um, also wanted to mention the governor's budget request this year for a wildfire mitigation investment package, which would be in addition to uh, the supplemental bill that I just mentioned. So the, the governor's budget request is split between DNR, the State Forest Service, and the Department of Public Safety. It's uh, a one-time transfer um, totaling $9 million from the general fund. And of that $9 million, $5 million would be going to um, uh, wildfire mitigation projects and to help build local capacity um, for those like landscape scale uh, projects on federal, state, uh, and private lands. Um, and then this would also provide resources to local governments to help them keep like a pipeline of shovel ready projects. And then the remaining $4 million would be used to do public outreach on fire smart uh, building practices, uh, home, home hardening incentives and insurance education, um, as well as direct cash incentives to lower the cost of home hardening and other uh, defensible space improvements in the wildland urban interface. So, um, you know, I think we all know that 
wildfire mitigation needs in the state are are probably in the tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. So um, on one end, this is really exciting that um, we have these possibilities before us, um, but we also know that we need to do so much more. So appreciate uh, any advocacy from this group to help elevate those needs and support uh, the efforts that are underway this year as well. So I think that is all I had and I'm happy to take any questions or um, yeah, let me know if you're hearing anything else that you'd like me to update you on. Thank you, Courtney. Um, some great news there, but I think you made a good point. Um, we, uh, it's just a little bit, it's a big step in the right direction, but it's still just maybe not as big of a step, but it, that's great news and really excited to hear that. So, uh, well, anyone um, have any other questions? Raise your, anyone raise your hand? And Courtney, great job, by the way. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yes. we can hear you, Matt. Oh, good. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, to Commissioner Shadow McNally and Mark for stepping in and, and testifying on behalf of the nursery bill. That was a really interesting hearing, uh, more on the technical side, less on the sort of the policy, but I just wanted to thanks folks for, for helping getting a 13-0 um, vote to, to move it forward. And then on the biochar oil and gas bill, um, Daphne, we, I, there's some there's been a flurry of things on the CSU side, so maybe you and I can touch base. Uh, we're just trying to figure out how to right size the timeline and the funding associated with it to make that successful. Uh, and and I could get you an update um, offline on what the system office is communicating back. But um, on the co-swap funding, so there's a couple of different vehicles that there's continuous funding moving through, and I'm wondering like. You know, uh, in particular on the um, in the workforce bill, there's in there's a, a request, and then there's also the this the request for um, that you. I, I was apologize multitasking. I can't remember which bill it's attached to. I'm curious to know, like, is there opportunities to um, sort of is that is the goal here? Like, if one doesn't kind of move that, that the other does and how, how should this group and maybe how should the council think about advocating because I mean I think we all want to see continued sustained funding for a program that's doing a lot of good but I want to make sure that we're advocating in the right way as folks are engaging with members and engaging in communities on which is the most or the, the most important um, funding mechanism from, from y'all's perspectives. I think that's a great question. Um, um, I, I open it for the floor. I, I've had the same kind of question. So, so Matt, I, sorry, I think I cut some Mr. Morgan? Yes, I had the exact same concerns there in that I'd done a little bit of homework as well. And, uh, uh, trying to trying to get the funding for the workforce development and trying to get it where we need it and co-swap. And I think maybe both programs are aimed in the same direction, but we need to be as efficient as we possibly could be. And I was looking also into the four-year college versus the two-year college, and I kind of pulled up some numbers. And CU's budget for next year is, is five and a half billion dollars. CSU's budget is $1.5 billion. And the average cost for a year at CSU is 33,000. There's 29,000 at CSU. And uh, at Western Colorado College is 25,000. At Colorado Mountain College, it's 17. And at Front Range, it's 17. And your tuition numbers are 13,000 hard a year for CU, 12,000 at CU, CSU, 4,100 at your junior colleges and 4,400. And so I guess bang for the buck, I'd like to be as supportive with these programs as we can also because it eliminates a lot of transportation for those groups. And uh, <clears throat> I just guess I'm, I'm looking for a way to 
we're inclusive of the four-year colleges, but I'm really looking for a way to get this for vocational education as much as we can. That's where the needs are, I think, in a lot of places. And uh, uh, I'm not a government employee, so I can make the blunt statements here. I'm all for CoSwap, as long as it doesn't defund the workforce development program that we're trying to get through here too. And uh, Director McCombs is exactly on target here. Is how do we do this efficiently or can we do something together to make it work or is there an opportunity there? And, and I don't know, so I'm wide open to any ideas there. Thank you. And um, Mr. Morgan, I think, um, you know, the point that you're making about, um, that's kind of what I'm hearing on the flip side from some of the counties and other stuff is worried about the workforce development piece um, taking away or losing kind of the direction away from the co-swap. And so uh, I, I'm also interested how, because I know that I've heard from some um, folks, uh, former commissioners and stuff that wanted to make sure co-swap is kind of continuing on um, and having th that funding. Um, but I also said, well, if we don't have the workforce to do the, the projects, you know, we need both. And so I'm, I'm curious too how we kind of um, uh, collaborate to be successful on all fronts going forward. Because, you know, obviously it's, um, it is a year where we're, we're appropriations and things are going to be tight. Courtney. Thank you for raising your hand. Yeah, um, I would say as the sort of probably person closest to CoSwap, um, I'm happy to take this question also back to like our budget director and more program staff and talk about how um, this usually works. This is my first time moving through this process of seeking funding for a program in many different avenues. And I know it's common, but I don't usually know how it all uh, comes together or if people usually trim requests off so I can try to chase down that answer for the next meeting um, and have some information for you all. I think I'm hearing some people are concerned that COSOP might like hold back the workforce development bill and then Jody you were saying you were hearing that some people didn't want to lose COSWAP in the workforce development bill is that is that right I just want to sort of take the full picture back to the It's in that bill um, I just know that um, there's others of, that wanted, I don't know if they knew about all the opportunities out there and okay. I think they were concerned about, they wanted to make sure somewhere CoSwap was still being kind of um, sustainable and that it was going to go long-term. So that's, so that would think that would be a great topic for our next meeting agenda item to kind of um, think about that. Cause I think you're right, Director McCombs, it's, it, and I, Mr. Morgan, too, where it's something I have been thinking about a lot um, after um, kind of um, the last couple of weeks, seeing how everything is kind of gelling together. So does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Anyone else have the same concern? <laughs> um, this is Hillary. Can you get your mute? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I uh, <clears throat> I guess I was under the impression that um, some of the workforce housing dollars were going to move through CoSwap, uh, and it was going to be a, a partnership with that program. I'm um, now, so I guess I just need to understand this better. The workforce housing bill was develop sort of separate from CoSwap or is there any opportunity to just run the workforce housing program through or this particular um, one uh, created in, in the bill, run it through CoSwap so continue to you know do, meet all the objectives that I think we all agree on of the need for workforce housing and long-term sustainability of the CoSwap dollars. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner. I think actually, I'm not sure we're talking about, we're talking about the workforce development. I'm sorry if I said housing or something, but 
This is the workforce development bill. The one Did I say housing? Sorry. I, I obviously I'm in multitasking right now. It's just reading that word. Uh, yeah, I, we're on the same page. We're talking about development. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I just want to make sure. Um, I, I, I'm, um, I think it's just a good conversation to talk about. So is there a way? I mean, I guess maybe that's a, sorry, maybe that's a question for Matt uh, or Courtney. Um, is there an opportunity or is that too big of a, is that not the direction we want to go? Is there an opportunity to run these dollars through CoSwap to continue to develop these this program in CoSwap? Maybe that's too big of a concept for new. Mr. Morgan, your hands raised. I guess, Commissioner Cooper, I see these as uh, two different things. They both are aimed in the same direction, but they're very much two different things. And I guess, what would be the advantage to running them through CoSwap? Uh, that would look to me like another level of paperwork, bureaucracy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the workforce development should be able to stand on its own and CoSwap should be able to stand on its own. And, and I think all we're really, all I'm looking for is a balance there, I guess. But I, I think there are situations where both programs can complement each other. But I guess I would like to hear your perceived benefits of running a through CoSwap. I was just thinking efficiency and supporting CoSwap in the long term and the fact that recognizing that we need workforce development long term in order to achieve all the projects that are, you know, and, and objectives that uh, that are part of CoSwap. So I just sort of saw them um, maybe being part of the pro same program and creating efficiency within government. But that if if that's um, I, I agree with your uh, with your stated goals and if if combining it with co swap is not going to get us there then it, i was just throwing it out in you know in response to the conversation of what do we do about co swap thank you commissioner i see um daphne had her hand first and then christy thank you commissioner i was just going to jump in here and it's a good question and and courtney's right that we should take it back to our budget team to see what the how like what the appropriate path forward is here but CoSwap is funded through the wildlife or the um, wildfire mitigation capacity fund and the statutory eligible uses for that fund um, were laid out in a bill from a couple of years ago. It does include supporting wildfire mitigation workforce development, including the engagement of Conservation Corps and the Department of Correction state wildland inmate fire teams. But I, I don't know. I, I think that might fall a little bit outside of the scope of the workforce development that's being proposed in Senate Bill 5. So I think Courtney is right. We'll just need to take this back to our team and um, see what the right path forward is. I, I don't know if we would need to make some statutory changes to have Senate Bill 5 be a part of CoSwap. Um, those are just initial thoughts. Thank you, Daphne. I was having the same um, thoughts um, as you were. I just, I might, it might make it a lot more complicated, and might, um, might be um, putting up some challenges going forward for Senate Bill Five. Just kind of, and I'm concerned about that. So, um, Christy, your hands raised. Yes, I agree with you guys, but wanted to say that I think we've made good headway in bringing this issue to the forefront and. I'd like to keep it separate just so that we can really get behind that, like, because we all identified it as a group that that was really important. So I just would, wouldn't want to see it get sort of lost or folded into something else. Thank you, um, Christy. Um, thank you, Daphne. We're going to let you head off. Head off. Thank you very much for being here today. I appreciate your time and um, you're just phenomenal with how you can bring it all together. And, and uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, I miss seeing you in DC. So yeah likewise thanks Jody. all right see you next time bye guys um but i agree with all of you that um i think the question maybe for for courtney to take back is 
maybe it's not a wise thing to combine them, but maybe how do we um, get this workforce development bill done and, um, and still make sure the funding for the projects is supported, I guess. Is that, is that a good, a fair question? Mr. Ms. McCombs, do you think that's the question? Would you reframe that for me just real quick? Um, I guess how do we, we want to see this workforce development bill happen, but we also know we need to kind of support kind of the long-term sustainability of the funding for the co-swap program. Are those, those are two separate things. How do we, yeah. the question, how do we, how do we get this workforce development bill, but not let the energy or momentum out of co-swap um, slow yeah. down? So there's a couple things that have been cooking around in my brain around these questions. And, you know, one of them back to Mark's point is that, and I, tell me if I'm wrong, right? This, I don't want to not, will not speak for the group, but um, I think our initial drive around workforce development was accessible, low cost and, and, and rapid turnaround, right? And so we were building on the FRCC model that we're familiar with, that some of us kind of visited and we were kind of talking about how would you replicate that or expand it acknowledging that they turn away students every year and what happened and this is completely appropriate within the nature of the system and the process is that four-year institutions were like hey we'd like to compete for these opportunities as well and it's like well all's fair in love and war right and and so i think what you saw was some change language giving those up those entities the opportunities to to compete um and I think the bill does require some consultation with the State Forest Service and others to see where those funds might be directed. And really, the funding is not substantial in, in, its, in its ability to make huge impacts. So I'm still very comfortable with the way things are moving forward as it relates to the dialogue and the focus. And considering I work for a, a, an organization that has a four-year forestry program that I'm sure they don't want any competition with in the state, um, you know, it's, I think it's completely uh appropriate to have that dialogue and to give other entities an opportunity should the bill pass to 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 make a run at meeting the critical needs that we have across a lot of different disciplines in the forestry space so i'm good there the 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 co-swap hook is that it's also a workforce development component um you know there's that that big event that we did out, out with the governor last summer um in jefferson county there's a great picture of my butt as I'm talking to these kids on the CPR News website, and, and I'm talking to Hillary, who is the core crew leader, who is now a forester for the Colorado State Forest Service, uh, and was direct recruiting them, you know, saying, you know, I, I, I'm new, but by the way, here's my card. If you want a job, let me know. And we hired her. Uh, and, and so there is a nexus there uh, as it relates to the work. And, and, um, and yet, I'm telling you, continuous appropriated funding is a tough ask, and and trust me, because we are fiercely defending what we were able to gain in, in 2021 and HFPC and Furworm. So um, I, I just think we'll have to be thoughtful about this group, how we nuance the differences, uh, in, and I want to see COSOP succeed as well. Any place where this state's willing to invest in the in the need we need to amplify and and integrate and so um i just asked the question because people are curious because there's a lot of different vehicles right now in the system to try to land some sustainable funding for a program that's been very successful in getting dollars out of the ground and getting young people interested in the work so i just wanted to daylight it i i i, I you know uh it's a d delicate dance right because it's a fierce competition for limited resources um uh, but at the same time, I want this group to be really get comfortable being candid and transparent about what's in front of us so that we can leverage the full voice of the Forest Health Advisory Council to impact the best policy. So we got to get good at bringing some of these things up. And I'm just kind of here in different circles as the mountain communities. Um, and, and so I thought I, I, I put it forward today. So let's just think about, it, I think, J Jody, and come and come back and 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 maybe folks you know, use your sensing abilities to go out in your communities and, and float, you know, what do you think the most effective mechanism is and, and how, how do we want to move forward so that we can bring that to the larger body? Because what I learned in the nursery bill hearing is that when this group speaks on behalf of this powerful stakeholder uh, entity, 
it's very relevant for policymakers. And so um, we should be really thoughtful about that and, and be willing to have uh, interesting conversations about what's the right policy right now, even though it you know can absolutely get people like me in my job in trouble. But I'm, I'm willing to 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 be uh, vulnerable and so that we can make really good, have really good discussions and and, and make really good policy. Um, Mr. Um, Director McCombs, spot on. You're you're basically re, you know speak. Out, you must be reading my mind today. Spot on. Um, that's exactly what I've been wrestling with after that um, the forestry bill hearing and committee hearing and um, some converse questions I was asked after that. So I. I 100% agree with you. Um, Pat, I see your hands raised. Pat? Torsi? Mr. Morgan? Yeah, a couple things spring to mind. Director McCombs, I think I understand the position you are in because you are truly a branch of a four-year institution that I'm kicking in the shins fairly hard here. But uh, <laughs> we got to get to where we need to get to, too. And uh, I appreciate your transparency there. Uh, my ninth grade civics teacher told me that economics was a science of distributing limited resources over unlimited wants. You can bring, everybody's got good causes, everybody needs something. And then another mentor to me that was a huge mentor over the years was uh, <clears throat> Dr. Dennis Lynch at CSU for many years. And he said, you know, get the help of your friends and neighbors, gather your friends, be sure you're doing the right thing, and then don't be deterred because there's nothing wrong with being a real strong advocate to do the right thing. And, you know, and I, I think that was some great advice that's helped me all my life and he was anybody that knew him he was quite a guy and then the last comment i don't want to get too homily here but uh sometimes my old uh my sister-in-law says you know there's nothing wrong get yours for the greedy people do well if we're doing the right thing let's get it done and get our share before the greedy people do and that's kind of what i feel about this i think we've got a good cause and we're doing the right thing so Thank you for listening to that. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Great points. Um, Pat, Dorsey's um, question is, the goals of both programs is reduce to reduce wildfire risk in our community. I think we need co-swap and a workforce development, um, a workforce to implement it. Can we strategize what it takes to prepare for Colorado for wildfires versus picking one? And I think, the, and I think you're spot on, Pat. Um, I, I think it's not an or. I think it has to be an and. And now, um, we have to figure out how we do that and um, and um, see both of successful. And I agree, um, Mr. Director McCombs, when you said about um, our first intent was to get, you know, if our uh, front range community college was that was our model that they could expand and could quickly get people out the door since they're turning people away. And that's what we need. And then it said the development in the bill says two new programs. And, um, you know, I think we, you know, the, the bill sponsors because they had such a big um, push um, from the four year um, institutions that that's why we were in that, that stakeholdering, um, Mr. Morgan and I. So we heard, we heard them loud and clear. So, um, so I think um, this is a great discussion for our meeting in two weeks. Um, or in, yeah, two weeks. What does everyone think? Do you want to think about this and come back and we can have a really, um can a candid and straight to the point kind of robust conversation on this because i agree with you director mccombs if we all have kind of um that kind of defined and really kind of that uh, the strong points we need to make about this then we can be ready for when these start hitting appropriations and it comes down to everyone kind of scrapping over those dollars then we know kind of what we need to do to so to make sure um, this is a big win-win for for everything for this session, does that sound like a plan? And then the, yeah, and then well yeah, then the and thank you, Pat. The information coming back from Courtney will be really important. So we'll get that information back from Courtney, 
And then maybe everyone, if you want to think about that, maybe we can submit. If you have um, some ideas, maybe we can submit them to Courtney and she can put them all in one paper. And maybe we can put those out for everyone to kind of look at and kind of be prepared for a thought process, a, a thoughtful discussion um, in two weeks. Okay, any other comments? Just one. Thank, yeah. thank you everybody for your support and then moving this stuff forward. I think it takes a, you know, it takes a group of concerned citizens and legislators when they see, they know how to write, read public opinion. They know how to read it real well. And, and when you demonstrate the desire and the demand, you can, you can move some things forward that need to get done. And I sure appreciate everybody has helped it, lend it to these, these efforts I very much thank you well said mr morgan i appreciate you very much um and again just a phenomenal job last week so I appreciate all that you did so um we have one more agenda item this old business um i um feel like we kind of covered a little bit old business too but anyone else have any old business because and then i think we definitely have our um one and only agenda item besides approving the minutes for next week's because I think this will be a really good discussion in two weeks. Anybody else have anything for old business? And I thought it was a really great discussion and I thought the Forest Health Council meeting we had as a whole was uh, was a great meeting and Director McCombs for chairing that for a while. I thought I thought uh, it showed that we've uh, our council is uh, looking to our um, our work and kind of feeling confident about the work that we're doing. And I thought that was a good affirmation and validation of our um, of our committee. So I hope you all felt that way too. Um, it feels like we're, rep they must feel like we're representing them well and they kind of put their trust in us. And I, um, that really felt great. And I'm really energized to, to, to get this bill through and, and to, uh, have a big win for our first, uh, um, you know, first year or first round as a, a, for, a legislative committee for the Forest Health Council. Um, Director McCombs, I'm sure you had the same thought, but go ahead. That was it. Just that, uh, what a great reflection of the the group's desire to move things forward and continue to be active uh, early in our in our tenure in this in this form. Uh, and secondly, I think we should be really thoughtful about how we continue to communicate this outward. So anything that we're doing or anything that we're saying, we really focus on being over communicative uh, with, with the group so that we can continue to build confidence and, and maintain flexibility, acknowledging that the thing, you know, just goes round and round and round and round, round until the last gavel. Uh, and so our, our continued participation, uh, active participation, I think will be this, uh, lend itself to the, to the success of the mission of the larger group. So great, great indicator uh but at the same time with what does they say with great power comes great responsibility and you read my mind because that was my last comment i was going to make was i'm sure that um after our next in two weeks our meeting we have that um that discussion and we have those points and we have that feedback from courtney i think that will be a really great first report um to the full council to let them know um because we will be able to come out with some kind of action or some kind of plan from that, I think. And I think we'll be able to communicate that um, right away to the full council and uh, let them know, um, you know, where we're at. So I don't think there's really much we can report from today, other that we're going to have a big discussion in two weeks. And, and so I think that will be our first really um, robust report. And I'm sure Courtney will do a great, she's always great at capturing all of our minutes, but um, maybe we can kind of help craft the, the points that we want to get across to share with the full council. So, um, can I make a quick comment in relation yeah. to Courtney? Um, so, so, with Angela out, I have been observing recently uh, some amazing folks stepping into that that gap, and I just want to congratulate and, and honor Courtney and Allison's participation lately everywhere uh because not only are they doing the regular job that they were already doing which were fully uh encumber their their abilities but they've also stepped into a gap that dr bogue fills rather robustly uh across a lot of different disciplines so i just want to tell you Courtney, how much i appreciate you stepping in 
as well as Allison, uh, and the work that you guys are doing is pretty awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's yeah. been giant shoes to try to fill for just a few months, but it's been fun. Cool. Well, you're doing a fantastic job, so just making sure you know that. Yeah, I 1,000% I agree. So um, so if there's any, uh, any other questions or comments, we'll go ahead and adjourn. And uh, I'm going to get into the TSA line. Yay me. You're braver than I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get my have, a, have a safe trip. I'd rather <laughs> take a I'd rather take a whipping from a mugger than that, but have a good <laughs> trip. Well, I appreciate you all. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? This is Julie. I'd so move. Any second? Second. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you everybody for the well wishes. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thank all. you too. Mr. Morgan, I'll call you once I get to my gate. Very good.